Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karin and welcome back for another video. Today we're looking at bullet journal weekly spreads, or more specifically what you can include in a weekly spread. For me, I like my weeklies to essentially be a one-stop spot for all the information needed to keep myself organized on a weekly basis. So being able to see what tasks need doing, events that are coming up, and any other information that I want to track at the time. As part of this video, we're going to be looking at some of the different things you could put on a weekly spread, and also a few ideas of some of the layouts that incorporate those things. One thing that I spend the most time on when I'm planning a new weekly spread is just thinking about the things that I want to include. I know I normally like to have a space for each day of the week and a section for a running task list, but there are so many other things that can be included as well. Here you can see I'm just writing some of those ideas out. This page is actually in my new long-term collections bullet journal that I'm going to have a setup video of next week. If that sounds like something you'd be eager to see, do make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on that one. If you've already seen my video on ideas for layouts to include in your monthly setup, you might see that there is some overlap between what's on this list and what's on that one. Pretty much most habits can be tracked on either a monthly or a weekly basis, just depending on the frequency with which you do them which is why a lot of those ideas are also suitable for putting on a weekly spread instead. For instance, one example that I've tried recently is meal logging. So I had this on my weekly spreads for February, but previously I mainly did that on a monthly basis. Having a read through what's on this list though, just as I finish writing it up, and I've tried to section these into categories, we have ideas that are about what's going on, so events, appointments, and schedules. And those schedules could be for things like study, work, personal schedules, etc. Ideas related to tasks and note lists, so daily tasks, weekly tasks, a themed task list, so things to do at work, things to do at home, housework or chores, themed note spaces, so maybe a list of ideas, a shopping list, health notes, book notes, etc. Maybe a space for notes for the next week. We then have ideas related to trackers and logs, so habits, weather, study, sleep, a time tracker, mood tracker, steps tracker, a workout or fitness log, a meal planner or log, or a gratitude log. We then have the goal related ideas, so a space for weekly goals, goal action steps or weekly priorities. Ideas related to things you might do at the end of the week, so reflection, a memory section, some highlights or the top things from the week, and a currently section, so currently reading, currently watching, currently listening to, etc. And then also some ideas for filling space, because every so often I do get an annoying little extra space on my weeklies that needs something to go there. So the ideas we have for that are quotes, doodles, maybe stickers or a mini calendar. Of course this list isn't exhaustive, so I'm glad I have a little bit of extra space at the bottom here just to write any other ideas that I think of or come across. Once you've decided on the sections you want to include though, then you need to think about how you want to put these all together in a layout. For the ideas we're going to go through here, we'll be looking at an example of a horizontal layout, a vertical example, and a separate boxes example. Any of the sections that I decide to go with in these layout ideas can of course be switched out for other things, whether they be from that initial ideas list we had, or other things that are going to be more useful or more relevant to you. Remember this is going to be your weekly layout that you're going to use to keep yourself organized. So make sure you're including things that are actually going to provide value for you. As you can see though, we are starting with the horizontal layout, so I've just sectioned the page into seven rows, one for each day of the week and then a header row at the top. From there, I just drew in some columns for each of the different sections that I wanted to include. What I went with for this layout in particular was spaces to record events, top tasks, workout notes, health notes, and a meal logger. I also made space for a little tracker on the left-hand side, which instead of just being for did do or didn't do kind of habits, is more for habits that can be done to varying amounts. So for each day, each habit will end up with a little bar, and the bigger the bar is, the more that habit got done, or that habit got done to a greater extent. 
For the weekly spread ideas that I have in this video, I've tried to use layouts that I normally wouldn't use. I really love trying out new weekly layouts, and I do have quite a few videos on that topic. So if you're looking for more weekly spread inspiration, make sure to check out the videos and playlists that I've got linked in the description box of this video. On this layout though, from left to right, we have the amounts based tracker, sections for events, top tasks, workout notes, health notes, and a meal log. Flipping on over though, we'll be looking at the vertical style layout. For this one, I ruled in seven equal sized columns across two pages, which left me a little bit of extra space on the left hand page to use as the page header. Similar to the horizontal, I then just went and split all of these columns up into the different sections I wanted for each day. On this one, the sections I decided to use were for time tracking, weather, events, tasks, a word of the day, and a spending log. With the extra space that I had on the right hand page though, this I used for themed task lists, so home, work, and personal, and also a mini calendar. In terms of the materials that I used to set up all these layouts, they are linked in the description box, but for the colour I'm using a combination of my Tombow Dual Brush Markers and the Statler Tri Plus Fineliners. You'll see here that because I was alternating pens, I actually ended up making a mistake in the days of the week. Although I don't actually end up fixing that one just because I'm not actually going to use this weekly spread, I do have a video on how to fix mistakes in your journal which could be useful. Like any of the other videos I've mentioned, that one is also linked in the description box. Although I can't give you guys an accurate number in terms of the amount of time that each of these layouts took, I can say that this vertical layout was a lot more time consuming only because I had to write out all of the little headings multiple times. Thankfully though, due to the magic of editing, we don't have to watch me do that. Again, just like the last layout, any of the sections that I used here can be swapped out for other ones, depending on what you would find useful. Flipping on over though, we're onto the next layout idea, which is having all of these things in separate boxes. While the horizontal and vertical style layouts that we just looked at work more on a grid-based system, so days along one side and then sections along the other, in this one we have everything separate, which at first glance can be kind of overwhelming, but it really depends on how many sections you want to use, the size of the sections that you're using, and also if you're a fill every space with something functional kind of person like me, or if you're the kind of person who likes to have a little bit of empty space or space for decoration. There is a huge amount of information that can be stored in a spread like this though. So you see we have trackers down the left hand side for mood, water intake, steps and habits. In the other sections on that page we have a space to record the weather, themed task lists for home and work tasks, a space to write down your events, and a space to write down weekly goals. And then on the right hand page we have a quote of the week space, notes and memory spaces, a place to write down your dinners for the week, a currently section, a space for ideas, and a space for reflection. To some people this layout would be way too busy, but to others, and myself included, I like the idea of everything having its own little space. As we have a little flip through of the layouts we've looked at though, question of the day for you, what's another element that you think would be useful on a weekly layout? Of course, my list of ideas is in no way exhaustive, so it'd be great to know what kind of extra elements could be included. As always team, thank you for watching. If you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more on planning, productivity, and personal development. Until next time, bye.